Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with Megan. This is a donation reward for Smurf, so thank you, Smurf, for donating. And, uh, yeah. This is a movie I never planned on ever seeing, because it didn't look interesting to me. Honestly, if you've seen any, any creepy killer doll or, um anything like that in terms of a movie that's what this looked like just honestly a really cheap and cringy um take on that and, and i mean cringy because based on the trailers i've seen it looked like it was going to be using the kind of references and dated humor and stuff that you would see in like the the powerpuff girls reboot and it's like oh my god please no and it just didn't look like something that was up my alley but it was uh requested as a donation reward so i'm getting to it nonetheless um i as i say i anything is game anything is fair game with donation rewards um but I had also heard that this did pretty damn well after its release. Like, um, it actually, like, was really well received. And that boggles my mind based on the trailers. And maybe it's a case of the trailers not doing justice to the movie. That's happened before. Maybe that is a case because the trailers honestly made it, make it look like shit. The trailers make this movie look like absolute dog shit. No offense to all the dogs out there. Um, it just, it looks so fucking bad. And yet, apparently, it did well and is well received. And it's like, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that pretty much what I remember about it from the trailers is, you know, creepy killer doll given to a girl for, I think, her birthday um doll is like you know this like very smart ai doll and everything it and it eventually comes alive and starts killing people and shit um it's just and, and there's something about like a dance and whatnot like a tiktok dance and it's like oh my god uh this movie is gonna be dated in a few months <laughs> Hell, a few weeks, probably. It's just... I don't... I don't know what it's gonna be like. Maybe maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll somehow surprise me and end up being good. It's like... And I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt, as I always do. But I'm just, like, saying, based off of my initial impressions and everything... It looked really bad. And hell, sometimes really bad movies can be entertaining to watch. So maybe there's some appeal in that as well. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, I'm going to try not to just make comparisons to other stuff like this that has appeared throughout the movie or throughout the history of movies. Um, I'm going to try not to just constantly do that because it's like... It's probably right in your face about it. It's probably so similar. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but either way, we'll give it a chance, of course. And again, hopefully it might end up surprising me. I mean, there's been plenty of movies that have surprised me on this channel that I didn't think I was going to like. I, I mean, Hocus Pocus 2, I didn't expect to love that as much as I did. <laughs> so you never know. You never know. Um... But yeah, for now, we're going to get into this. Uh, but before we do, just as a reminder, it is March. And that means it is Double Reward Month. So, for all those watching this as it airs, Double Reward Month basically means that if you donate to the channel, you get two rewards instead of one. You can pick anything. It can be movies, shows, something from YouTube, whatever you want to see me react to as long as I haven't seen it already. And you can check with me in the comments regarding that. Um, anything is fair game. Doesn't matter how old it is, doesn't matter how new it is. It can be even something that hasn't come out yet. Um, but you want to see me react to it when it does come out. 
Um, so you could suggest it ahead of time. Or you could, if, if you're not sure on what you would want, you can donate and then choose to select your rewards later. Um, but for every donation, no matter how big or small, whatever you can afford, you get two rewards for every single donation. And you can make as many as you want. Um, you can do that however you want to do that. Um, but as always, it is optional. It is completely optional. You won't miss out on anything from the channel. No content will be behind a paywall. You'll still get to see everything. Um, it's just a matter of getting to have your input a lot more in things. Um, your movies will be added to my list, uh, your shows will be added to a list, and they will be gotten to in the future. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely uh, hoping that all of this goes well, especially with the new format we're doing for these double reward months, where it's going to be every few months basically each quarter, um, each season, you could even say. The next one will be in June. So yeah, um, hope you're excited to see more of these in the future. And again, if you can and want to donate, uh, please feel free. Uh, donations are taken through PayPal, uh, and we can talk on in the comments and anything about what you would want to donate for plus if you need my paypal email <laughs> um yeah just feel free to suggest something for that and again any donation counts for a reward or in this case in double reward months two rewards but you can donate at any time it doesn't have to just be during a double rewards month you can donate anytime you want to um but during this month you get two for the price of one so hey um, that all being said, though, let's just get on with the reaction and see what Megan has in store for us. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and, um, I blanked out. I, I, I completely blanked out. Wow, I just, I had a brain fart there. Come back to the reaction, because... Okay. Go to the... Um, we're starting this over. Go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction. After you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. And for now, I'm Connie. And I will see you at the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. This movie was almost entirely what I expected of it. And I say almost entirely because there are a couple things that surprised me a little. I wasn't expecting this to be so boomer. Um, like, my god, this movie was boomer. Um, it's an entire, like, and, and this isn't just me saying this. Like, I, I looked things up in between. Um, one of the, uh, people behind, one of the producers, James Wan, um, who also did uh, Annabelle, by the way, so another killer doll movie, um, set, he, he said this, pretty much the concept is about embracing technology too much and relying too much on it, and what happens when technology runs amok. It's a commentary on the world we live in, and it feels relevant. Okay, Boomer. This is, like, the entire movie, it's, it, like, from the very first scene with Katie in the car with her parents and everything, it's made very clear that this is a, it's a boomer movie. It, it's just boomers having an excuse to shit on um, millennials and Gen Zers who are very reliant and 
invested in technology because that's just the world we live in nowadays. It's just a way to basically shit on us. Because they think, like, no, we should go out and touch grass and shit like that. It's like, oh my god, shut up. I hate, I, I hate it so much. Um, it just... This is the guy who co-created uh, James Wan, the guy who co-created Saw and Insidious and, and created the Conjuring universe. Like, this guy has been doing horror movies for a while. He, he to a degree, knows how to do them. And it's just like, what the hell? Like, what the hell, my dude? You thought this was a good idea. Like, I know he didn't write the film. He, he was a producer. Um, same with James Blum. But still. Still. <sighs> and another thing that surprised me is that it was at least entertaining. I will say that. I will say that. It was entertainingly bad. Like, even outside of the, um... Even outside of the entire, um... Boomer shit, it was pretty bad. It was so dumb. Again, nothing about this... Like, like, I understand. It's like there's a lot of movies out there that aren't realistic and everything. And it's like you don't go to them because you expect them to be. Like, you don't go to a MCU film expecting realism. You just don't. Um, although, when the MCU films do integrate realism into them, they do end up being better, surprisingly enough. Um, hence, you know... Phase 4 actually being the best phase so far of the MCU. And I will not apologize for that. Um, but it's like, yeah, you're going into this knowing it, there's going to be a level where you have to suspend your disbelief and everything where it's not going to be realistic. Because, you know, killer animatronic doll and everything. But the problem is, like, outside of just the doll itself, being like obviously ridiculously exaggerated in a lot of ways a lot of this was like steeped in the idea of like real like commentary on real realistic stuff and the problem is it's so the very concept of this existing is unbelievable um, not the movie but the character of megan because in no way, shape, or form would that ever be acceptable. I, I talked about it in the movie, but that would never get past the planning stages. It would not be. It would not be accepted. It would not be greenlit. It, 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 like th they would not be able to do that. Um, dog might start barking. Just warning you ahead of time. There's an Amazon truck out there. I don't know if they're coming here, but just warning you. Um, but yeah. They would never be able to get as far as they did with that. And it definitely wouldn't actually be a product that would be put up for anything. Like, come on. No, it wouldn't go anywhere because it's so unrealistically bullshit. Nothing like... It, with, the, with the amount of dangers that that could cause, with the amount of liabilities, there that would not go anywhere. It would not go anywhere. The idea of these companies, of this company, greenlighting this and planning for the future with this is just basically impossible. It's not going to happen. Something like that just would not happen. And it's just, it's it's astounding to me that we're supposed to believe that happened, even in the in this sense of this movie. Like, if 
we saw in the movie that it was a prototype that wasn't going to go anywhere and Gemma just ignored that and started working on it on her own anyway, which kind of did at first, but uh, and, and that that's where everything started. She brought it home and introduced it to Megan there and everything. By having the company actually sign off on it and everything, it, it completely removes the believability of basically everything. And it makes the movie hard to like get behind in my opinion um and it's just on top of that it's so fucking cringeworthy it's so cringy like oh my god like they're they're using songs in this that are like old even for for this movie that just aren't relevant anymore it's like I understand, like, you like the song, but why, why would you, why the fuck would you put Titanium in here? That makes no sense. There is no logic to that. It, it, it does not work. It just felt off, and it felt like this movie was, like, trying to live in the past. Like, usually movies, when they put, like, real songs in there, they usually will put bigger songs that are current. Because it's what's popular current. Titanium came out over a decade ago. It's not relevant anymore. It's just, it's, it's not. And, and on top of that, you also had the fucking TikTok dances. It's like, oh my god. And just so much of it. A lot of the dialogue was pretty cringy too. A lot of it was like so by the numbers, and, and a lot of it just it just reminded me of the Chucky or the Child's Play reboot, you know, the one with Mark Hamill that was fucking terrible. It's like because in that one, it's like Ch uh, the Chucky, the um, God, what is the name? Oh God, what is it? I can't remember the name of what the Chucky doll actually is called. Um, I can't think of it at the moment, but, um, like, in that one, it's like, it's, it's like a chip malfunction or something, um, or something like that. I don't remember. I try to push that movie out of my head. Um, but it, but it's like, it's not an intentional thing, and it just kind of evolves that way, um, and he's just, I believe, trying to protect the kid, and that's kind of what's going on here. At first, I mean, at the end, it's like, for, she basically says, forget it. <laughs> it's like, I'm on my own now, bitch. <laughs> and then it's like, it just feels, it's weird because it feels generic as hell. Like an everyday, ordinary, evil doll like movie, but... Then there's like parts of it that just feel like they're trying to be like fresh with the kids and failing hard. And that kind of like almost makes it feel a little unique in that regard. Um, I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> like... Again, it's it's one of those movies that's kind of on a so bad it's good scale, um, like Tommy Wiseau's The Room or Birdemic or whatnot, um, where it's like, yeah, yeah, it's it's bad. It's it's not a good movie. The acting was very off for a lot of it. Um, like, let's be honest, the kid who played Katie, um, no. I've seen some good child actors. She's not really one of them. Um, and uh, Allison Williams, I think, is the actress who played uh, Gemma. Uh, I have the page open so I can check here real quick. Uh, da -da 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 -da, where are you? Allison Williams, yeah. Um, she was probably the best actor in this, but it's like she still wasn't that great in this. Honestly, she... 
she could have been better. There were there were quite a few scenes and line reads that were just very off. I I really don't even know how to how else to describe it. They were just very off. Like there was this uncanny feeling about them that just didn't work. And on top of it, that ending is so clearly sequel bait, and it fucking worked. This movie is getting a sequel. It's going to be called apparently Megan 2.0. And I guess it's like, okay, so Megan somehow downloaded her consciousness into Elsie and is surviving through that and is, uh, I don't know, maybe going to get a new body or some shit? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> it's just, it, it baffles me. Because the critical response to this has been amazing. Um, this is this movie, according to Rotten Tomatoes, has a ninety-three percent approval rating based on three hundred reviews. And the critical consensus reads: unapologetically silly, and all the more entertaining for it. Megan is the rare horror comedy that delivers chuckles as effortly, effortlessly as chills. Is this supposed to be a horror comedy? Because that, that would at least explain a lot. Um, but it didn't feel like a horror comedy. It didn't feel like it was trying to be a horror comedy, I should say. It, it felt like it was trying to be a genuine horror film. And again, with all the boomer shit in this, it's like, my God. Um, it didn't feel like it... It felt like it was trying to be that. Not a comedy. And it's the, the issue... <laughs> Is if it if it was intended to be a horror comedy, it, it really didn't pull that off in a believable way. Because again, it didn't feel like it was trying to be funny. It felt like the humor in it was unintentional. It doesn't come across that way at all. Rocky Horror Picture Show is more of an actual horror comedy than this. Um, just on, as a random example. Um, but let, let's look at some actual reviews. Variety's Owen Gleiberman called Megan a diverting genre film, one that possesses a healthy sense of its own absurdity, and wrote that the film satirizes all of us, or at least those who now think of the mirror offered by artificial intelligence as an actual form of interaction. So basically, in a, we could just say okay boomer to that review. Uh, David Rooney of The Hollywood Reporter comment, commended, uh, commend, commended, yeah, it's supposed to be commended, the physical and voice performances of Donald and Davis, respectively, as well as the visual effects work used to depict Megan. Rooney wrote that the film's shocks and scares, what shocks and scares? There is nothing actually scary about it. And even the cautionary notes are not lessened by the enjoyable vein of campy humor. The, it, like, okay, let's talk about the entire, um, the, the entire thing with the cautionary notes. I'm probably not going to read any more reviews, um, because I, I just want to talk about this and then I'm probably going to be done. <laughs> um, the entire boomer shit about the horrors of technology and becoming too quote unquote obsessed with it it's like this has been done obviously many times before i you could say terminator did it but the thing is terminator was good and did the idea of it correct because it wasn't just like pissing on people who are into technology and you know the internet and stuff this movie is basically just throwing up middle fingers to people who are like that and saying you're wrong and this is why you're wrong look how bad things will get if you continue to be like this and it's like it, it felt almost insulting it genuinely did it, but it's like that's kind of what all of the boomer uh shit on like hating on this kind of technology and how the world is just is in regards to it that's how a lot of that feels so uh it's ridiculous 
it just and, and that's not like the movie like making fun of that either it, it's like that's what it felt like was a core theme of the film and from what we've seen on what they were saying about it the the producer james wan it's like that was intentional and it's like oh my god so let's let's talk about it. let's talk about that entire argument um it's bullshit it's absolute fucking bullshit um the, the boomers and everyone who are like constantly bitching like oh kids are too interested in technology nowadays it's like if they only went outside and played more it's like it, you can't have real friends uh, online and shit like that it's it's absolute bullshit it's like this is where our world is now and yes kids are going to be more invested in video games ipads and stuff and there's nothing wrong with that that's just how the world is now There's, we keep like destroying and tearing down parks and stuff. And it's like, where are kids supposed to play outside nowadays in the first place? But also it's like, on top of that, that's just not where the world's at anymore. You have to evolve with the times. Like, come on. Kids who, there are plenty, a lot of kids who still enjoy playing outside. They're not being, like, gotten rid of or anything. It, they still exist, believe it or not. But the thing is, with where the world's at nowadays, the ones we need more of are the technologically minded anyway. So it's like, it's actually going to help our world make even more and better progress. It's just all these boomers who are afraid of progress and afraid of the world becoming technologically dependent that can't stand the idea of kids rather wanting to play games and stuff on, on their phones and on iPads and stuff than wanting to go and wrestle in the grass or shit. And it's just, it's such a dumb idea. It's such a dumb concept. And it's just, it... People are stupid. That's what I'm getting at. There And the idea that you can't have real friends online, that you have to have that, that only that real friends are only like in like people you've met personally, like in front of you and spent time with like face to face and stuff is one of the worst bits of bullshit that comes from that entire uh, line of bullshit. Um, and, and I can speak to a lot of of uh degrees on that because i have most of my friends i met through online and a lot of them i have met in real life since then but i met them first online and they are just as much real friends in fact a lot of times more so real friends to me than people i have met for the first time in person and become friends through that traditional method this is just a case of boomers being unable to cope with the changes of modern day. They're stuck in the past and can't let things progress and evolve in a perfectly natural way. And it just, it irritates the shit out of me. Anytime anyone talks about this kind of shit and complains about this kind of shit or, or uses it in media, it, it bothers the shit out of me. It's like, I just, I can't stand that entire thing. Um, but I want to make, I want to make it very clear what I said before. This was still an enjoyable film. This movie was still fun to watch. If only, if only because it was so absurdly, like, ridiculously bad. And, and I'm, and, and I'm not even saying it's like the worst film out there, it, and everything like i've seen worse films i've reacted to worse films a again there's films i've watched and reacted to that are just are, are just bad that aren't even a so bad it's good kind of situation movies that are so bad they're good are 
more actually in the middle, I guess you could say, in terms of entire quality. Because the 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 part that makes it still good and enjoyable keeps it from truly being bad. If that makes any sense. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um now if this was intended to be a horror comedy, again, that does change things because that would genuinely um, make it a lot more palatable in terms of that. Um, but everything I've seen has just listed it as regular horror, and again, it doesn't feel like it's trying to be a comedy at all. It feels like the humor is completely unintentional, and they're actually trying to be serious about the horrors of this all. And everything I've seen has listed it as just a science fiction horror film. So it's like, I'm supposed to suddenly just believe it's a horror comedy? Because you, wa you want to believe that the humor in it is intentional? Because it makes you feel better, <laughs> I guess? I don't know. I don't know. It's just... <sighs> People who are unironically saying this is good, like unironically good, just absolutely baffle me. Because it's just, it's just not. But again, it's so bad it's good. And that makes it super enjoyable. I, I actually really like watching movies that are so bad they're good. Um, Tommy Wiseau's The Room and Birdemic are great examples of that. Like... I saw those well after a lot of other people saw them. Um, friends of mine were doing bad movie nights and everything at the time. And we had watched those two movies and together, like, doing the bad movie night. And it's like, yeah, it was fucking hilarious. It was funny. It was enjoyable as hell to watch. And I've watched both of those movies multiple times since. One of them more than the other, that being The Room, because that's funnier. But still. Um... But it's like you compare it to something like the Super Mario Bros. movie, the live-action one uh, with Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. It's like, that's just bad. Or the Last Airbender movie. That's just bad. They're not so bad, they're good. They're just fucking bad. They're just terrible. This is a so bad, it's good movie. This is it, It's enjoyable. It's fun to watch. I would watch it again. I would definitely watch this again. Probably more so with other people or reactions than just on my own, but I would watch it again. Um, because it is still fun. It's fun to watch with just how ridiculous it is. And that's the appeal of this to me. The problem is most, uh, the, most of the things I've seen, even like prior to watching this movie and all, have all been centered around people actually saying it's like unironically and like seriously good and that just confuses me <laughs> but it's like acknowledging that it's just really good as a bad movie it's like yeah and I, again i i'm happy i got to see it because i would have never checked this out i, I mentioned that in the pre-thoughts i would have never checked this out i had no interest the trailers looked super cringy, and I just had no interest whatsoever. And so I just was never going to check it out, but then it was uh, it was donated for. So thank you, Smurf. Genuinely. <coughs> Excuse me. Genuinely thank you for allowing me to see this. Because again, it was super enjoyable. I did have fun with it. It's like, that's, that's good at least. Um, but yeah, it's like, I, I went into this not expecting a lot, but giving it a fair chance, and again, it was mostly what I thought it was going to be, but it surprised me by being so bad it was good. It surprised me by being super entertaining and fun and enjoyable to watch, um, and I, ho I hope I didn't just seem, like, upset the entire time, because I actually wasn't. <laughs> I was actually just, like, losing my mind at how silly it was. Unintentionally silly it was. Um, 
but yeah. Yeah, it's... I mean, there's a sequel being made. I wonder if that will capture the same So Bad It's Good magic that this did, or if that's going to just kind of ruin that. Who knows? Who knows? Apparently it's set to come out in 2025 currently, so there's that. A couple years still. Um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say at this point, honestly. Um, but seriously, like I said, thank you, Smurf, for donating for this. And, uh, as I said in the pre-thoughts as well, it is the March Double Reward Month, so if anyone wishes to donate for more movies like this, or just other movies in general, or shows, or YouTube stuff, please feel free. You get two rewards for the price of one. Every donation, no matter what size, no matter how big or small, gets you a reward, and as always, it is optional. And you can choose stuff that's not even out yet. If there's something that's going to be coming out that you would love to see me react to, feel free to suggest that. Or if you don't even know what you would want to suggest, feel free to uh, donate and tell me, like, you'll tell me later what the uh, rewards will be. That's all perfectly reasonable. But as always, it is optional. You don't have to do it if you can't or don't want to. Um, but it does help out, obviously. Um... Either way, thank you so much, Smurf, and thank you to everybody who has donated. Um, for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.